Sit down, make yourself comfortable. Have your back erect in a comfortable and relaxed position. Close your eyes and we'll begin. As we breathe in and out the nostrils, be aware of the breath flowing behind the sternum, the bone in the center of the chest. As the breath flows in and out of your lungs, slowly, gently, bringing fresh life and light, be aware as what we might call the light of the breath carefully assesses what is there behind your sternum. This is the focusing work, to be aware if you experience a felt sense. It could be subtle at first and then intensify. It might be experienced as an emotion like sadness, grief, nostalgia, passion. It could be felt as a sensation like pain, tenderness, a catch in the breath, a, a constriction, an experience of tightness or a deadened phlegm-like congestion. Let the breath caress this felt sense. Like the morning breeze caresses your cheek. Let the light of the breath be cast upon the area more carefully, assessing it once again. When you have a sense of the area to work on, stay present to it. Continue to breathe upon it. The in and out breath have been likened as blowing upon the ember of the heart. It's what's referred to generally as the fire of the heart. Rumi said, if you wish to find the beloved, be present to the sadness in your heart. You think it is your sadness, the experience of being abandoned, cut off, alone. This is truly your sadness, but mixed within this sadness can be found the sadness of the beloved, who experiences that you feel abandoned, cut off, alone, even as you are held so close and so dear. So, if we wish to find the beloved, let us be present to the sadness in our hearts. We'll come soon to Rumi's second statement. But as you continue to breathe upon the heart, there's a kindling as a warmth, a decongesting movement begins to develop. There is release. The heart softens. The in-breath penetrates. The out-breath releases. this warmth, Rumi uttered, burning, I want more burning. As you continue to breathe upon the heart, and as it softens, let the in-breath penetrate the heart ever more fully, ever more deeply. As you penetrate the heart ever more with the breath, you begin to experience your perceiving self, descending from the head as it moves ever more completely into the heart. Now you begin to see from the perspective of the heart. 
Now you can begin to relate to the worlds within and without from the throne of the heart. Now you are beginning to develop the eye, the ear, the tongue, the sensing of the heart. As you continue to breathe in and out the heart, it softens more and more. You might begin to experience an inner space to the heart. At first, the chest cavity seems larger than usual. Then, as you continue to breathe, you become aware that the space of the heart is accentuated, develops, and unfolds into a boundless condition. This boundless space of the heart is both inside you and outside you. It penetrates three-dimensionality and yet resides outside of it. It is a dimension all of its own. We can call this the domain of the heart. This vast, boundless domain is not empty, however. It is just the opposite. It is fullness itself. It is an ocean teeming with the most wondrous, the most scintillating, the most luminous, and the most subtle of structures. We are now approaching those secrets, great mystics in the past, said were placed in the heart. What is it like to be in the domain of the heart? What are you like in the domain of the heart? What qualities of life can be discovered here? How are you relating to inner and outer life now? As we are present to the issues of our lives from the perspective of this domain, how are we affected? What new information emerges in our awareness? Take time and open your eyes and be aware of being in two worlds, the outer world and the vast domain of the heart simultaneously. We can maintain our ability to hold both worlds through our practice and our breath. As we open our eyes, try to strengthen connection with the heart by orienting our breath to it as you breathe in. Play with strengthening this faculty throughout your life. Allow it to be the meeting place for your presence and the presence of the one you love as well. All the ones you love and the only one it is. Bring it to anything you have any difficulty with. It will surely help. This practice of the subtle heart is one of the most important practices that you can do. And the more you can do it, the more you will begin to live from your heart, which is a much more trust, trustworthy vessel than your brain. Thank you so much and have a good day. When good things happen to other people and happy things happen, that is a wonderful thing.
what's under the tree with the wise words you Gaze so strong. And you speak to me of untamed freedom. And how we're all connected from the old to the
One of the things about surrendering is not reacting. What it means is that you're humble enough to listen and hear what comes in rather than reacting to it and thinking no. As a person who used to think no first, I have started to just think, oh, well, if, if I'm thinking no, why? You know, find out about myself, not about what my opinion is. We are all ultimately alone, and it is so lonely when, until we accept the fact that we're alone. And then we're never lonely because basically the trees are our friends, and the leaves are our friends, and, the, and our feet are our friends, and, and the, um, our jobs are our friends, and our parents are our friends. And the behaviors that come in, if you're letting them go, like a, like a rock in a stream, a strong rock in a stream. You can be a pebble and let the stream push you around to places you want to be, want to, don't want to be, all that. But if you just become a rock, see what happens. Watch your mind. You are not your mind. Just watch your mind. Watch your feelings. You are not your feelings. But just watch your feelings. Most of our minds and our feelings happen automatically. So I suggest that you listen to this message at least three times because you haven't really heard it. You've only heard some of it. So, whatever suggests the practice, that's what I would do. But humility is the main thing, to be able to be humble before this magnificent creation, of which you're, we're each a tiny, tiny part. But we are the only people who can direct how we add, subtract, or are neutral in the world. Neutral is probably the safest. You do less harm if you're neutral. Anyway, it's important to remove the tin wall of resistance, which is what non-surrender is. Simply resisting the outside forces coming in. But you want them, just let them go right by. Anyway, sweetheart, I love you. Bye-bye.